Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are, and welcome to another episode of the Ladypreneurs on Fire show. And today I'm going to talk with a, yet another lovely lady. I'm so uh, blessed uh, to be able to talk to these ladies. The goal of these interviews is always the same, to help other uh, women, uh, to inspire other women to make uh, an extra income, because I'm totally convinced that as if more women all over the world could earn an extra income, that this world would be kinder, would be better, would be stronger. So I'm going to introduce this lady uh, with her bio that she uh, sent me because it is uh, so amazing. I don't want to make a mistake. So uh, she grew up in a small town on the west coast of uh, British Columbia, and she experienced many challenges after being badly bullied through her school years. As she overcame the effect of bullying through her youth, she developed a passion for empowering women and helping them find their own voice. So that is really something that we do here on the Ladypreneurs on a Fire uh, show. Christina was a successful hairstylist. Uh, she owned and operated a salon and an on-site wedding business, but she wanted more and began looking for an op opportunity to empower. And uh, she was uh, able to do that five years ago. She started her online business. And that really uh, helped her reaching her full potential and allowed her to create the life of her dreams. I'm not going further with the bio because I want her to tell the rest herself. So with no further ado, I'm going to introduce you, uh, Christina Whiteley. Well, there she is. Hi, Christina. Hello. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm you know, so it's so funny. You start to listen to, to the story of your life and you're like, wow, like, look at where we ended up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because that is a really, really uh, cool story. Um, um, uh, where you were, where you were in between and where you are now. Can you... Uh, Take us through your journey a little bit. Who was the small Christina and uh, how did she turn out to the, this amazing woman that you are today? Well, I was always a different kid. I was always really outgoing and loud. Um, I started singing when I was uh, when I was five and I started singing competitively when I was seven. Okay. So um, I I knew how to put myself out there. But what was really cool is that I, I was too young to be scared. Okay. I was too young to have stage fright, right? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I just, I got to walk into that. But that kind of attention uh, got me bullied by a bunch of people, right? Okay. Because mm -hmm. because you you excel in something or you're special at something or you're good at something and it makes you different than everybody yeah. else. Mm -hmm. And so you're a target. You have a target on your back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I didn't, at the time, I didn't realize that. I just thought, what's wrong with me? Why don't people like me? Like, what did I do? I've always yeah. been kind and nice and, and all that kind of stuff. So I went through high school and, and went off to university. And, you know, like, like I grew up in a small town where I don't know if you were sold this dream, but the, the way of life was you go to high school, you get good grades, you get a scholarship or you go to university and mm -hmm. you, you get a, a degree with a well-paying job and healthcare and, and a pension. And then you work out the rest of your days yeah. and you work get married, and have kids, right? Like that's yeah. the fairy tale story, except for, I really didn't like university. I, I fell asleep in many of the classes because I wasn't <laughs> that kind of learner. I didn't make a lot of friends because nobody wanted to sit next to me because I fell asleep in every class. Um, and so it just, it wasn't my thing. And, and even though I did it for five years, I did it because I wanted my parents to be proud of me. I did it because I, that's what, what was expected of me. And so I went to school for music. Now that kind of sucked the joy out of music for me, but it made me realize that I really wanted to have a family. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted to be a mom. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's one of my passions, my daughter, it means everything to me. And I knew that I, I needed a lifestyle to do that. So that's when I got into doing hair. And as much as I love doing hair, I did that for 11 years. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I worked my way up into a salon until I hit a glass ceiling and couldn't make any more money there because I was working for somebody else. Mm -hmm. And that amount of money was $36,000 a year. I couldn't afford to pay my rent. So I was bartending on the weekends and working 14 hour days, three days a week, just so I could pay rent. And I was exhausted. And I just thought there's gotta be more to life than this. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, and so one thing led to another and, 
I ended up opening up my own salon out of my home and having an on-site wedding business. And I did that for about six years and I loved it. And by the way, I had no idea how to do that. I just like on a hope and a prayer, I'm like, let's just try it. Yeah. You know, I didn't have any business background or anything, but that was just, that was my spirit, that entrepreneurial spirit, right? I'll figure it out as we go. And it was great. But then late into my pregnancy, I had a really bad shoulder injury okay. and I wasn't able to continue working. So I got really scared. I was seven months pregnant. I couldn't continue doing my job. And I was like, now what the heck am I going to do? Mm -hmm. And that's when I found online marketing. That's mm -hmm. when I found, okay, wait a second. There's another way to do business out there. And I believe that this is the way of the future. I really did at the time, you know, I'd met people that were in that, in that line of work. They didn't have a boss. They didn't have a schedule. They didn't have to live anywhere. They could live anywhere in the world. Like that sound sounded like heaven to me that I could live life on my own terms. Like I didn't even, why didn't nobody tell me that when I was 18? <laughs> I didn't know it took me, you know, it took me 15 years to figure that out that yeah. I could do that. And so when I realized that that was an option, um, I went all in. Again, I had no skills. Uh, I I think I got a C minus in computer studies at, at university, and I used um, social media to build my business. I also, you know, love networking, and I'm a social person, much like when I was a hairstylist. I mm -hmm. love talking to people and getting to know them, and I just that's a, a huge part of who I am. Um, and so I just found a way that I could utilize my past skills uh, to to create a lucrative business online and help people along the way, right? You know, when you're, when you're bullied, um, it takes a lot out of your confidence. And it mm -hmm. took me a lot of time, it took me therapy, it took me personal development for like the last 20 years mm -hmm. to become the person that I am now. But I will fight every day for the underdog. I will fight every day for that woman that just wants a chance and isn't quite sure she can, like she believes that she can do it. Mm -hmm. I'll fight for her because I know that I had people fight for me yeah. and people that said, you know, when I had self doubt, when I didn't think I could do it, when I thought you have no business being here, like this isn't for you. I had people say, no, Christina, you are, you keep going. You put one foot in front of the other and you're meant to do this. Right. And, and so I want to be that, I want to pay it forward and be that person for somebody else. Yeah, that's beautiful. So, um, thank you for sharing that because that is so important. I imagine that you were very confident when you started your first week or month in your online business. Is that what you imagine? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I don't know if that's I am. Uh, I am. I am. I am. I'm, 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 I'm uh, joking. I'm because um, I can imagine that that must must have been difficult in the beginning. How did you, you? You you did start anyhow. So can you walk us a little bit through that journey from the because you you came from something that you were very confident in, very and good, then you yeah. start uh, something except for the fact that you were good at uh, connecting with people and talking to people, but you started something totally different. How yeah. did you pivot and how did you adapt? And how was that those four first three, four, five, six months? Oh my gosh, what a good question that is, you know? Um, I haven't been asked that before and that's a really good question. So, um, you know, what it comes down to is not the journey, like how it happened. It comes down to how badly you want your vision, how badly you want where you're going. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I just had a three week old baby. I, I, you know, if you have kids and you're watching this, everything changes, like I, everything changed when I had that little girl and I was willing to do anything to spend more time with her. And there was nothing that would get in my way of doing that. Right. So my drive to improve my life, to create a lifestyle where she was a huge part of that, my drive to do that was far more important than mm -hmm. all of the failures I had in the first little while because I was ignorance on fire. I didn't know what to do. Gosh, if I look back at the posts that I did or how I talked to people or the messages I sent, it was terrible, like absolutely horrible. I don't even know how people responded, but it wasn't the words right? It's never the words, it's your intention behind the words. Mm -hmm. And what people could see was I was a brand new mom 
that I was feeling insecure about my new postpartum body and I wanted to feel better about it and I wanted to take health into consideration and and get myself feeling like myself again so I could be the best version of myself for my daughter. What what mom can't relate to that? Mm -hmm. And then I also wanted to create a lifestyle where I wasn't working on evenings and weekends that mm -hmm. I you know that I could take her to birthdays and barbecues and I could go to the lake with her and go camping with her and I didn't have to miss out on singing her to sleep at night. Like those were the things that were so important to me as a parent as a mom. And so I was willing to do anything and I failed forward. There were like, there were flops. There were people that unfriended me, disowned me. They like didn't want to hang out with me anymore because they were scared. I was going to pitch them on the business. Right. Uh -huh. They were so scared that things were going to be uh, different or, or, or that I, you know, I, all of a sudden my personality had changed. And so at that time, I want to be real honest. I, I lost a bunch of friends, yeah. like a lot of people that I considered friends that would come see me at the bar, which I realized, Oh, I was your friend because I got you VIP and cheap drinks mm. or I was a hairstylist because you got your hair done. I give you a deal on getting your hair done. Yep. And then all of a sudden these people, I was not of value to them anymore because they saw me growing. Mm -hmm. They saw me doing something different and it made them feel uncomfortable yep. because they're like, what is she doing? Like, mm -hmm. why would she do that? And what happens is in that situation, many people, and this used to be me, I used to get really jealous of other people and their lifestyles and be like, well, I bet they're not happy. Yeah, <laughs> or like, there must you know, be something wrong. <laughs> they're not, or I bet they, I, here was my, always my thing. Oh, I bet they have family money, right? Like yeah. I always like have an excuse for them until I realized I was no different than them. Mm -hmm. And my crappy attitude was the thing that was holding me back. Mm -hmm. You know, that entitled attitude that like, oh, they must've had it better than I did. Mm -hmm. They didn't. They just slugged through the mud longer than I did. They mm -hmm. were willing to get into the trenches. They were willing to improve themselves. And so I had to look at myself in the mirror and say, okay, Christina, there are things that you need to do differently. There, You have to improve your communication. You have to learn how to create leadership in a, an environment where everybody is happy instead mm -hmm. of projecting your goals and your aspirations and who you are into other people. You have to allow people to be who they are and support them where they're at. And so I had to learn all of this stuff. Um, and and that, that alone changed who I was from the inside out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, right? beautiful. Yeah. And so it was never easy. It was never, you know, oh, it came so naturally to me mm -hmm. or whatever. I failed forward and then I got better. Like if you just get 1% better every day okay. by learning something or asking a question or, or, or getting into a training, then you're a hundred percent better in a hundred days. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I always say. 1% uh, yeah. better every day. That's 365% in a year. So that is huge. That is really, you. This is when you have an angle of only 1%, if you uh, open it 1% uh, bigger, then you see the enormous yeah. difference so that is that yeah. is really powerful what you say there yeah so um you are now in a totally different pl pl place uh, you're not only having your online business but you are also coaching uh, other uh, people uh, uh, doing the same uh, in a real generic uh, way so um i love to hear a little bit more about that because uh, that is really something that is is also very powerful because uh, people can grow at their own rhythm because that that is something that uh, in, in in online marketing maybe network marketing is often a little bit misunderstood not everybody has the same goals and the same wishes how do you uh, deal with that how do you help them like that yeah i think it's so important to meet people where they are and they're level of growth depends on their mindset and where they're at you know i've had times over the last five years that i've gone through tragedies you know mm -hmm. something that i suffer with is ptsd um and and i you know i've had times in my life where people have passed away or I've had a miscarriage and and mm -hmm. things are difficult mentally right mm -hmm. um and so i always have that 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 compassion and empathy for others because you never know what's going on in somebody else's mm -hmm. life and they have to come like they have to come to that conclusion on their own and they have to want to grow. They have to want to put in the work. They have to want to do those things. You can't, you know, people always say, how do you motivate your team? You don't motivate your team. Yeah. You set the example and you set the pace and the people that want to keep pace with you will keep pace with you. Mm -hmm. The people that want to up their game will reach out to you and the people that want to watch will watch. And you, as long as you are kind and helpful to everybody, then that that's the thing that is important, right? That you come from a heart centered place. You know, I've always helped people 
doesn't matter if they're on my team, doesn't matter with what they're, that they're with a different company, doesn't matter any of that stuff. Um, and the reason that I created the six figure profit plan, my mastermind was because people would reach out to me all the time. And I just got to the point that I didn't have time to help everybody and had to help the people that, that had, you know, had joined me and, 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 and knew me and I had a relationship with, so I had to help those people, but I wanted to create an environment where I could help everyone. Mm -hmm. and, and I also do have a free Facebook page called uh, Life Transformed that anybody mm -hmm. can join so they can get in there and, and get some free trainings as well. But the whole point of it is when you have had help along the way, you know, um, I, I believe in hiring coaches and why? Yes, it's expensive. Uh, you know, I, my program isn't that expensive, but like I've hired coaches for $20,000 US, mm -hmm. right? $30,000 US. I've hired coaches to teach me those things. Why? To speed up my process mm -hmm. because they got to where I wanted to be faster. And instead of me failing forward, I ask good questions and they tell me what to do and then I apply it. Now you have to be willing to do the work. Yeah. You have to be willing to take action. You have to be willing to heal those unhealed parts of you, those trauma parts of you that are triggers that make you behave a certain way or fall back into bad habits because our life is simply of intention and habits. Mm -hmm. And if you can move forward in a way that you create good habits instead of bad habits, or you switch out your bad habits to good habits, mm -hmm. then you can absolutely transform your life. Yeah. Shorten the learning curve, isn't that? Yep. That I learned that from, from Tony Robbins, I think. Uh, he always said, uh, if you learn from, uh, from like him, uh, or the struggle they went through. So that is, that is really, uh, really important. Yes, coaches are very important. So, uh, Christina, uh, we are just now having at the top, real topic of this uh, conversation because you told me something that I found so interesting. Um, the way you build, you don't build your business, you build your lifestyle around your business and then the business um, uh, blossoms automatically. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we've just entered a new era. OK, we've entered the information era, the information age, the gig economy, right? That's what shifted over the last two years. And so we've walked into this place where information is at our fingertips, no matter where we are. Mm -hmm. We can work from anywhere. The, the days of part time jobs um, are, are over because why would somebody go work a minimum wage job for $15 an hour when they can go do DoorDash and make 30? Mm -hmm. Right. And they can and they don't have a schedule. They can just go do it on their night off yeah. or they do Uber or they rent out a room in their home and get Airbnb instead of having a long term renter. Mm -hmm. Right. And so people are doing business differently and they're looking at things in a whole new light. I've I've never believed in, in, in doing a job for money. Right. Mm -hmm. Like I could go be a doctor. I could go be a lawyer. I could go be an optometrist. I could go have a high paying job. But I want to tell you something really interesting about that. There are surgeons out there making two hundred thousand dollars a year. And what are they doing? They're investing in real estate, which is a passive income mm -hmm. because they're working 80 to 100 hours a week and they're exhausted. Yeah, yeah. They're exhausted. Mm -hmm. And people need to understand that because of this transformation in the last couple of years over the gig economy, that how we make money has changed and you can leverage your time if you're willing to develop your skills and become of service and of value to others. Mm -hmm. If you are an asset to other people, you can make money doing that in whatever way that is. Yeah. And, and we have to start thinking that way because so many people got it backwards. They're working their butts off and they're working themselves into an early grave because they want a lavish lifestyle. They want the nicest car. They want to travel around the world. They want the nicest house. But what if you got to do what you love every day? You got to talk to people that you love to talk to people. You got to talk about the things that matter. You could have a podcast, you could have a blog, you could monetize those things, have a massive email list, have some affiliate marketing in that and make an incredible living while doing the things that you love and mm -hmm. you're passionate about. And I gotta tell you, when you're having fun and your life is filled with joy, you make way more money than if you're slugging away at a desk when you hate your life, yeah. right? And so we've learned, and my husband and I, we kind of joke about it because over the past, you know, we've been together for 13 years. Um, we've created different streams of income and we like turn our home always into a business, into some sort of money making machine. We have different mm -hmm. streams of income, mm -hmm. right? And so we continue to do that and search for different streams of income that'll pay us residually so that we can live life freely, so that we can live 
together and go do the things. We can go to the beach today. We can do whatever we want. Yes, I work hard. Yes, I work in pockets of my day, mm -hmm. but I incorporate it into my lifestyle. So work is not work. I don't have a work day and then a day off. I have a lifestyle that incorporates that in mm -hmm. so that I don't ever feel like I'm working. I get to talk to people all the time. I get to help them be healthy. I get to help them in, in, believe and in, in, improve their confidence. Like it's my dream job. Yeah. And if people knew that they could take the skills they already had, the passions they already had, you know, I have a friend, Lauren Bateman, I'm going to give her a shout out right now. She, uh, she's been working on YouTube. She used to own three different music schools. I hope I got that right. Is that the wife from Cody? Uh, no, 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 different, okay. different. And so she used to own three, I think three different music schools. And over COVID, that was a very difficult thing for her to keep up, right? Mm -hmm. Well, Lauren turned to YouTube. She, I just saw yesterday, she celebrated 9 million views. She's doing massive months, bigger months than she ever could have done in her music school by teaching people guitar online. Oh, yes, I know her. Right? That is why, yeah, I, she's awesome, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know her? Yeah, I know her. <laughs> I, ah, uh, I texted right? her a while ago before an interview, yes. <laughs> ah, see, so she's incredible. Mm -hmm. She's incredible. And and it's so interesting to see people taking their passions. Like, I, I didn't go, I didn't continue into music because I didn't want to be a broke musician. I mm -hmm. wanted to travel. I wanted to own my own house. I wanted to have kids and not have to worry about paying my bills. So that's why I switched careers. But to see her take her passion, and do this yeah. is just absolutely incredible. Yeah, and yeah. anybody can do it with any yeah. skill that they have. Yeah, yeah. And the and the and the best part of this, you can take it everywhere with you because yes. uh, uh, the gig economy is online, is digital, so you can That's go right. wherever you are. And that is a little, um, uh, how do you say that in English? Uh, that is a little um, bridge to what you did lately. Yeah. <laughs> Tell absolutely. Us. You, uh, you, you, you changed locations uh, oh, no. not so long ago. And, um, yes, I was checking out to see if, we, if I can put you on my page. So, because, yeah, so, uh, because, uh, because I, the lady I talked the with lady, uh, two weeks ago, she did the same. Uh, she went from the East Coast to the West Coast. And you went from North to South, uh, something like that. Uh, and the, the, the awesomeness of... Uh, this profession is you can take it with you and um, tell us a little bit about that journey because that is really a dream well I'm gonna recommend a book and it's a long book but it's a very interesting book and it talks a lot about history and it's called the sovereign individual and it talks about how we're going into the information era and how we're going to be uh, digital and how we can we can do our jobs and provide value anywhere in the world at any time right and create an income that way and so um I'll, I'll give you a really short story so about eight years ago my husband and i bought a 1985 glendale motorhome 24 feet and we drove all the way from vancouver island on the west coast of canada all the way down the coast down through washington oregon california down the over the border down the baja into mexico and we were gone for 10 weeks it was an adventure okay and so we thought we had our life made but what i didn't tell people is i was working for three weeks as a hairstylist 14 hour days to make sure i made money on the way there mm -hmm. and when i got home around christmas i was working 14 hour days for three weeks i was ex i was burnt out i was mm -hmm. exhausted i was in pain but that was the only way i could take time off because i was the commodity yeah. i had to be there to make money so we thought we had our made 10 10 weeks off like i don't know if you know this but canada you only get two weeks vacation okay. every year mm -hmm. okay so i was like this is great this is amazing so we're sitting on the beach down there enjoying our day this young couple comes up and they're in a camper van. They look like super young surfers, whatever. And so we start a conversation with them. And I say, yeah, what do you do for work? And, you know, when do you have to go back? How long are you traveling for? And she goes, well, we're heading down to Capo. And we don't know how long we'll be. We don't, we don't really have to be anywhere. We work online. And this was eight years ago. And I was like, what? So you don't have a boss. You don't have anywhere to, you don't have to anywhere you have to be. You make your own schedule. And I looked at my husband. I was like, we got to figure this out. Yeah. This is the way of the future. Like I know that. And so we, that seed was planted back then, but we were always looking for ways of residual income. We were always looking at ways to upgrade our skills and maybe get a piece of that pie. And right now 
that opportunity is so much bigger for everyone out there than you would even realize. There are so many things that you could be doing. You have an Etsy store. You could be an affiliate marketer for any company. You know, you could you could create online courses with your expertise. There's so many things you could do. And so we decided, you know, and it wasn't that long ago. It was at the beginning of October. Um, you know, we've been living in Canada for the last couple of, of years. I mean, we've lived, that's our, that's our home country. We've been living there forever, but we travel quite a bit. We've come to Mexico a lot. We absolutely love the people, the culture, the food. We love it here. And, and, and we realized that things were going to shift in Canada in a way that we weren't happy with. Mm -hmm. in a way that we didn't want to live our lives mm -hmm. in a way that we didn't want our daughter being raised. You know, my daughter's five and a half. Mm -hmm. The first seven years of your child's life mm -hmm. are critical mm -hmm. in who they become, their values, their morals, their decision-making skills, their critical thinking, all of that. And I was like, I am not willing to have my daughter raised this way in mm -hmm. a society right mm -hmm. now that has, in my opinion, gotten a little crazy. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we decided to shift things and change things. And I knew that I was going to pull her from school to homeschooler. I knew that that was something I was going to do. Lord help me, you know, <laughs> but, um, but very I, brave, you know, and it, but, but it, it matters to me mm -hmm, yeah. because I believe I'm a good mom mm -hmm. and I want to be the best mom I can be. And so my husband came home one day and things were changing very quickly in Canada. And he said, what if we could homeschool from the beach? And I never in a million years thought that I would be able to convince him to do something like this because we put her in French immersion back home mm -hmm. so that we could be exchanged and go to like the South of France for six yes. months and mm -hmm. she could go to school there. Like we've always had that sense of adventure. Mm -hmm. And I think traveling and experiencing other cultures is the best way to educate your family, to mm -hmm. educate yourself, to get perspective on the world. Like we came down here and it's life is normal, you know, yeah. and, and I can't even imagine being in that environment for another six months. Yeah. And so we decided to make a really big decision and, and make a move, um, you know, to, to have a break and be able to, to view what's going on in the world from a balcony point of view where we're not sitting in it. Mm -hmm. And, and I am so grateful that we, have the ability to do that and you know we've been working on this business for the last five years it's not something that happened overnight but we knew that we wanted to live a certain way and we just started taking tiny steps daily towards that you don't you know yes. it doesn't happen overnight it doesn't poof and magically appear opportunities present themselves in front of you for you to say yes or no yeah. right for you to take action for you to do something different and so he said that and i said if if everything was normal in the world I'd be there in a heartbeat. And he said, why don't we go? And so we booked our flights that day. We got ready. We set our house up. We did whatever we had to do because we have dogs and chickens and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. back home. And, and, and we decided that this was going to be the, the next right move for us. The next right move for our family. And you know what? We got down here and all of a sudden the world opened up. All of these people that we met are like-minded people from Canada and Europe and, 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 and the U.S. And we're having these, these big, real conversations, these critical thinking conversations and, and why people are here and what they're doing now. And it's, it's so exciting and it feels so refreshing because I'm going to tell you, the last few months back home, not good for my mental health. I was getting really depressed. I wasn't mm -hmm. happy. Mm -hmm. And 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 so often we sit in those things and we fester in them and we don't do anything to change them. We think this is the way life is. Yeah. This is how my life is going to be. And that simply isn't the case. You get to create your life. You what your words, your actions, they you speak them and do them into existence. Yes. And so we we have the ability to create our lives, create the life that you want, not the life that you have if you're not happy. Yeah, uh, amazing, amazing. Thank you for sharing that because that is very inspirational. You can do it, and uh, your, your the opportunities that you are talking about. It's often starting with some hunches that you think, okay, uh, well, but if you act on it, it uh, you you don't have to be clear on the goal. Just uh, start, and then it gets uh, better on the way. Um, we are. Um, already almost at the end but there is so much that i want to talk to you about you are talking about the beach i know you wrote a book i know you are co-authoring or writing a book with jordan adler from beach money um and you have uh, uh, something for the audience so can you tell us a little bit about that before we go 
Sure. And so um, last October, I released a collaborative book uh, with a bunch of powerhouse women called Women Let's Rise. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, every person got to write a chapter and they got to write their story. And and I highly recommend that book. It went bestseller on Amazon in five different categories. Um, I highly recommend it because it might not be my story that resonates with you. But somebody in that book will resonate with you. And all of a sudden, you'll realize you are absolutely no different than me. You're no different than anybody else that's out there living on purpose intentionally, mm -hmm. right? And, and maybe it'll empower you to make a decision. Maybe it'll empower you to take a chance or a risk or, or take a new step. Because um, I know it's scary. I know that, you know, it, it's not, you know, this wasn't convenient for us to come and pack up and move here. But man, I look outside at the palm trees and the pool and I'm just like, this was one of the best decisions we have ever made. Mm -hmm. uh, and we didn't know how it was going to go. And so I think that when when you start to fill your mind with personal development and other stories of people just like you things will shift for you mm -hmm. i do have a book coming out i think it might even be today i gotta double check um but it's a mo the momentum maker series um with jordan adler partner with jordan adler think of it like chicken soup for the soul mm -hmm. for network marketers direct sales online marketers you know all those all those kind of people affiliate marketers mm -hmm. it's chicken soup for the soul for those people and I so i was I was really fortunate enough to be able to write uh, on um, leadership and team building Ooh. because that's something I'm very passionate about is bringing people together and showing them that we can do more as a team and we can encourage and support each other. So that should be coming out pretty quick. Uh, and then if you want, I'm just in the middle of putting together something really, really, really special. Uh, you can message me on Facebook or you can email me at info at Christina mm -hmm. If you'd like to pick up the skip the scripts, freebie. And I want to tell you, it's not just like so many people are out there giving out scripts. I want to teach you how to have conversations, real conversations. So it's a three part video series uh, that'll teach you step by step how to talk to people, what to say when they say no, you know, how, how to position yourself and posture yourself so that nobody feels weird about you talking to them or asking mm -hmm. them or, or, or um, you know, reaching out to them and that you're simply there to offer them an opportunity that may or may not be for them. Yeah. And they can say yes or no, and it doesn't matter. But I really wanted to share that with people because most people get hung up in the details. Yeah. Most people get hung up in like, what do I say? What do I say next? Then what do I do? And these whole, this the whole script thing, like there's not a script on the other side. There is a human that you're talking to, yeah. somebody that is just like you, that has problems like you do, that has challenges like you do, that is that may or may not be looking for what you have. And so all our job is, is to offer something that somebody offered us. And I can't tell you how grateful I am that somebody offered it to me because our life would not look like this if I was still doing hair. My business over the last two years would have absolutely been destroyed by what happened, small business, all that kind of stuff, the lockdowns, everything, like my business would have been destroyed. I know a lot of people that aren't even doing it anymore. So mm -hmm. I feel so grateful that now I get to help other people in a situation that, hey, maybe they're losing their jobs because they're mm -hmm. making a personal decision for their health. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they're losing their jobs because there's technology that's taking over, yeah. you know, and, and those labor jobs aren't there anymore. Maybe mm -hmm. they're looking for a way to get into the gig economy mm -hmm. so that they can be a part of this and not get left behind. Yeah. And, and because we've done what we've done, we can help other people do the same thing. And, and like I said, we do it faster when we do it together. Yeah, that's true. Amazing. Those scripts I'm going to put in the link so that people can, uh, can uh, get to it uh, in the, in the show notes uh, later. Um, uh, Christina, um, where can people find you? Where can people connect with you? If they have questions or if they want to talk to you, where can they find you? Well, they can go to Facebook. I'm Christina Whiteley, W-H-I-T-E-L-E-Y, just like in the video. Um, I also am on uh, TikTok and I'm on Instagram at the Christina Whiteley, the one and only. You so are. just the Christina Whiteley. Um, and you can email me at info at ChristinaWhiteley.com if you'd like to chat. But I'm always happy to have a conversation. It doesn't cost you a dime. I love talking to new people. And if I can point you in the right direction, like I'm not saying what I do is for you. Um, you know, it might not be. But if I can point you in the right direction and give you an idea, plant a seed like those people on the beach did eight years ago, mm -hmm. then I'm going to do that because your life could be forever changed, right? Okay, that is amazing. Um, before we part, do you have some last words of wisdom to share? Mm. You already shared a lot, but maybe you have a little. I wish 
I wish, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know if you were raised this way, but I was raised, you know, right and wrong, good and bad, you know, um, y- you give it everything. And, and if you don't give it, if you're not perfect, then it's not good enough. Mm-hmm. And I wish that I had known that failure was part of success. I wish that I had known that failure was part of growth and that with every failure, there is a chance to learn something. There's a chance to integrate. There's a chance to improve. And then I wouldn't have beat myself up. How many of us have sat at home and, ah, oh, you really messed that up or you said the wrong thing? Thing, or you, you know, you, you, you didn't, you didn't do that the best that you could, you did the best you could at the time, yeah. you know, maybe you're having a crappy day and you had a conversation with somebody that you're not proud of. And then we beat ourselves up like, Oh, I can't believe I said that. I can't believe I did that. We re- we rework it in our brains. I wish that I had known that all of that is part of the process mm-hmm. and I wouldn't have beat, beat, beat myself up so much. I would have just said, Oh, I apologize. That was wrong. This is what I've learned. Can you forgive me? And if you can't, I understand. I'll move forward. But if you can, please just understand that I'm a human being too. Oh, amazing. That is so beautiful to finish this interview. Christina, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I love this interview. I love talking to you. We didn't know each other before, but I have the feeling that uh, it's like I have a new friend. Uh, really, thank you for all you're giving to uh, to this community, the wisdom, the the, the help and, and the, the fun part. Uh, so thank you for that. I wish you all the best uh, in, in Cabo and uh, um, uh, with the little ones. So uh, good luck. Good luck to you for your business, for your family, for your health. And uh, I hope to, we can talk to, uh, to each other again. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Monique. I really appreciate you giving me the opportunity to share this. And I hope we reached somebody today that really needed to hear it. Thank you very much. So wasn't she amazing? What a lovely lady, what a great inspiration and what a lot of wisdom. I really loved uh, this interview. Um, so um, I hope this inspired some of you to, to really take the chance, try it. Don't uh, be afraid to fail, uh, fall flat on your face and then get up and then do it over and over again. That is the only way that you can learn and grow and, and, and change uh, really uh, some stuff in, uh, in your life. When you were little, you couldn't walk. If at that moment you would have said to yourself, okay, uh, I forget it. I can't do it. Or your parents would have said it to you. You will. Uh, you would still be on the on the floor crawling. So um, r- just remember that you can do everything if you set your mind to. But don't make too uh, big uh, big of a steps. Just make small little tiny steps, and you can do it. So I wish you all the best, and uh, I hope to see you in the next episode of the Ladypreneurs on Fire show. Talk to you soon. Bye bye. Hi, this is Monique again. I hope you enjoyed the video, that you learned from it and that you take, uh, took uh, a lot of notes from it. And if you did and if you like this channel, then please do not forget uh, to subscribe to it and hit the bell so you get notified. And check in the description the link that I told you about or other information that I uh, could uh, give you. And also, if you have some questions, then please put them in the comments so I can get back to you as soon as possible. Bye for now. Take care.